Last night, the Red Sox did something that, that people have been waiting on for a very long time. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. As most of you guys know, there's going to be a lot of movement in this Red Sox pitching staff over the next couple of days to the next couple of weeks. The reason for this is a lot of guys are starting to come back from the IL. You have Joely Rodriguez, who is good to go any moment now. You've got Cutter Crawford, who should be back at the end of the week for the San Diego Padres series. You've got Garrett Whitlock, who isn't far behind him. And on top of just guys coming back, the Red Sox have some decisions to make about this rotation. They can't have a six-man rotation forever so they need to figure out which five guys are going to be starters for this team and which five guys are going to assume other roles and it looks like the Red Sox are starting to make headway on those decisions because last night they made their first roster decision to figure out where some of these guys are going to fit in and it's a bit of a doozy so what we're going to do in today's videos we're going to break down this latest Red Sox roster move we're going to talk about what happened we're going to talk about why it happened and we're going to talk about how this is going to affect this Red Red Sox team. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by breaking down, obviously, the biggest part of this red, latest Red Sox roster move, and for most of you guys, you already know what this is, but if you don't already, last night it was announced that the Red Sox are DFAing Ryan Brazier. That's right, Ryan Brazier is no longer on the Red Sox team. Now, we're obviously, in my opinion, and I think most people's opinions, this DFA is long overdue, although there were some good times with Ryan Brazier. I know it's a little bit hard to remember, but Ryan Brazier did help this team a lot. In 2018, he was a pretty big big part of this Red Sox bullpen. In 2018, he had a 160 ERA with a 277 ERA plus over 34 games that year. And he was huge down the stretch in 2021 when he came back from injury to help the Red Sox get into the playoffs. During the 2021 season, late in the year, he had a 150 ERA with a 320 ERA plus in 13 games. The problem with Ryan Brazier is that after 2021, things really took a turn for the worst. Ryan Brazier finished 2022 with a 5.78 ERA in 68 games. He allowed 40 earned runs in 62 in a third innings, and he kind of became a bit of a figurehead or embodiment of the struggles the Red Sox were having in their bullpen in 2022, right? It wasn't just Ryan Brazier who was being wildly unpredictable in the Red Sox bullpen, but he was the one who was sort of the face of all of it. So in 2022, he really sort of became the face of poor bullpen pitch for the Boston Red Sox and coming into 2023 a lot of fans and a lot of analysts didn't even know if he'd be on the team he ended up on the 2023 team and things just did not get better he finished this year on the Boston Red Sox with a 729 ERA in his first 21 innings of the 2023 season his FIP was still lower than his ERA at 4.39 but that's kind of been the problem with Ryan Brazier is that those kind of outlying statistics, those peripheral statistics always sort of said that there might be something there with Ryan Brazier, but you could only say there might be something there for so long before you realize that, hey, look, the results just aren't coming in. And this year was a prime example of that, right? He was just simply walking too many hitters. He was allowing too many hits during innings. He ended up with a whip of 1.517. That basically means that every inning Ryan Brazier pitched in, that he was allowing over one and a half either hits or walks each time he came into a inning and that is a big problem specifically for a guy who's coming out of the bullpen because sometimes you're going to be tasked with getting out of tricky situations and to have a whip where you're allowing one and a half walks or hits per inning it's going to be difficult to do that and Ryan Brazier just simply was not effective this year like I said this was really long overdue it probably should have happened during the offseason but I got to give it to Ryan Brazier he battled man he made it through what all offseason where people were saying he should be DFA'd. He made it through all spring training where people were saying he should be DFA'd. And he made it pretty decently far into the season where everyone was saying he should be DFA'd too. The dude battled and it honestly became a bit of a running joke. Now, I think the biggest reason why Ryan Brazier hasn't been DFA'd up until this point was because of injuries, right? You get into the year and you're sort of starting to trim the fat, but it felt like every single time the Red Sox were getting close to DFA'ing Ryan Brazier where us as fans or analysts were saying, 
saying, all right, the Red Sox pitching staff is starting to come together. This guy's coming back from injury. Could it be the time Ryan Brazier actually gets DFA'd and then someone else would go down and he'd make it another week, right? That's sort of how it felt for the most part with Ryan Brazier. So I think honestly, he got to this point based purely on injuries. And this was going to happen during this season at some point, specifically with the way he was pitching too. It wasn't like he wasn't given opportunities to prove that, hey, yeah, look, I've they've been saying for a while that my peripherals, my outside stuff, my predictions look really good. Here's what I could do. And let's get to that point. He was given all the opportunities in the world and he simply could not get there. I do like the fact that for Ryan Brazier's sort of last hoorah on this Red Sox team, Alex Cora and the Red Sox left him out there with the St. Louis Cardinals for two and a third innings. They allowed him to pitch 42 total pitches. His last outing in a Red Sox uniform, it totaled four hits, three earned runs, I believe from all from Nolan Arenado and two Ks. Kind of the perfect summation of what Ryan Brazier had been doing so far this year. Now, personally, I would be absolutely shocked to see Ryan Brazier picked up by another team. Again, I just don't think the results are there to the point where he could be a major league pitcher right now. Maybe they pick him up and throw him in the minor leagues, but I don't see him landing on his feet anywhere at the major league level. And I certainly don't see Ryan Brazier coming back up and joining this Red Sox team anytime soon. Maybe if he clears waivers and absolutely dominates in the minor leagues and they figure out something that was going on with him, then he gets brought up later in the season when an injury happens. But but aside from that, I really don't know what the future has in store for Ryan Brazier. And honestly, he's not in the Red Sox anymore. So I don't know if I really care about it, right? Unless again, he starts absolutely shoving in the minor leagues. He could go do whatever he wants as long as it's not in this Red Sox bullpen. So Ryan Brazier has survived for so long. Why was this move made now? So it hasn't been officially confirmed yet by the Red Sox themselves, but most people are assuming and Calix Core kind of hinted that this was a move to get Joely Rodriguez back onto this roster. Christopher Smith reported last night that Alex Cora stated that, yeah, he's probably going to be added Monday to this Red Sox team. So it'll be nice to get Joely Rodriguez back. Is he going to be an elite dominant bullpen arm? Probably not, but he's most likely going to be a really solid left-handed option out of the pen. At least hopefully he'll give us a bit of consistency from the left side. Now, last year, Joely Rodriguez, for those of you who need a bit of a refresher as to what Joely did before coming to the Red Sox, in 2022, he had some pretty good statistics. He was in the sec 72nd percentile in strikeout rate, meaning that only about 28% of the league struck out more batters per nine innings than Joely Rodriguez did. He was getting a ton of chases in the 94th percentile for chase rate and the 74th percentile in whiff rate, but he was walking a lot of guys. In last year, he was in the 6th percentile for walk rate. So you kind of take the good and the bad there. The Red Sox are hoping they can help with this command issue because if you do fix the command issue with Joely Rodriguez, he could be a really, really important piece to this Red Sox bullpen. But we'll see. I would be cautiously optimistic about how Joely's going to do on this Red Sox team. At the very least, taking a look at the left-handers on this team right now, Richard Blyer has been struggling a bit to get left-handed hitters out so far this year. Brendan Bernardino has been doing pretty well at it, but over his last three appearances, he's allowed an earned run in all of those. So it looks like he's tapering off a little bit. So to get Joely back is one going to add some new versatility to this Red Sox bullpen that we have not seen this year. It's also going to be a bit of a reinforcement to the left-handers on this Red Sox team. And it's just going to be fresh blood in that Red Sox bullpen in general, right? They are one of the most used bullpens in all of baseball. In fact, they are currently ninth in major Major League Baseball and bullpen innings pitched. So top 10 in the league in the amount of innings this bullpen has pitched. Getting a guy like Joely who hasn't pitched at all this year is going to be really great to help this bullpen hopefully get back on track. The other thing too is that Joely is apparently a fantastic guy in a clubhouse. People have been saying that he's super loud, he's talkative, he's a beat, he's a great personality to have in a clubhouse. So maybe that helps improve sort of the all-around morale in this Red Sox clubhouse right now after being swept by the St. Louis Cardinals. So hopefully we see Joely affect this team in more ways than one. But overall, in terms of this latest Red Sox move, I'm excited about it. I thought it was way past time to get rid of Ryan 
Frazier in this bullpen. I think by subtracting him, you're imp you're improving this bullpen already. Then you add in Joely Rodriguez, who was pretty decent last year, and he had some great outlying statistics that could indicate he could be really solid for this Red Sox team. And I'm excited to see what he can do as well. Either way, let me know in the comment section down below. One, what do you think of the Red Sox finally DFAing Ryan Brazier? Two, what do you think of the Red Sox hopefully adding Joely Rodriguez to this Red Sox team today? Let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox roster move in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.